Sorry, yeah. You'll never have to come again. <laughs> You'll not find it on YouTube. Right, okay. We've wa walked around onto Peveril Point. You can now see the shales a lot clearer. Okay, uh, they tend to be interbedded um, with some clay material. Then you get the hard shale, then you get a little bit of a softer layer. And you can see the hard layers actually sticking out. Okay, so that's the shale. In the distance, we've got the chalk outcrop of Ballard Point. Okay, going out to Old Harry, which is one of the stacks out there. All right, now this is Swan. Hey, what was that called? Ballard Point. This is Ballard Point going out towards Old Harry, the stack out there. This side of it is Swanage Bay, and this chalk ridge runs all the way through. Okay, down the south coast. Where do we get? Where do we cross that that chalk ridge to get into Swanage? Any ideas? Where did we come through that chalk ridge to get into Swanage? Paul's Grove. Paul's Grove. This chalk ridge is not the Paul's Grove chalk ridge. Good point, but we'll talk about that in a minute. When we came down on the coach, anyone notice anything? <laughs> we were asleep. The last few miles. <laughs> Something fairly derelict on a mound. Corf Castle. Corf Castle, yeah. Okay, so where we come through the chalk ridge is at Corf Castle. There's a natural hollow there. There's a river that runs through Corf. It must have eroded the chalk ridge down, forming a natural entrance. Now this area, this side of the chalk ridge is known as the Isle of Purbeck. The Isle of Purbeck, Purbeck Stone, Portland Stone, it's all the same stuff. The Isle of Purbeck is actually a peninsula. Now a peninsula is like Cornwall, you've got water on three sides, okay? So here, we've got water over there, Silston Point, we've got water around this side, that's two sides, where's the third side? Well it's not the other side of the chalk ridge, because that then goes into... Bournemouth? No, what's the, what's the place? Christ Church? No, this side of the... Who's local? What's this Stadland. side of... Stadlands. Stadlands, thank you, Stadland Bay. <laughs> Okay, so yeah. again, we haven't got water that side. However, go back two, three hundred years, and you did. That was all marshland. Studland Bay and the, the uh, sand at Studland was all marshland. And so Studland it was wet that side, all the way up to Wareham, where we turned off the main road to come down towards Swanage. So locally, it became known as the Isle of Purbeck. And it was a bit of a smugglers paradise you can see there's lots of little coves to get boats in bigger boat coming offshore can unload some smuggled goods onto smaller boats and they could be smuggled into the country and you wouldn't have to pay tax and excise brandy with well not whiskey but brandy um tea those sorts of goods were very expensive and if you could smuggle them in they were worth a lot of money and it became a bit of a lawless area the isle of purbeck and hence why we had the castle built at Fourth Castle. You control what goes in and out. The one point where people have got to go through, because it's either pick up your smuggled goods and walk across the chalk ridge, and it's steep, that's not easy, or you go through that uh, entrance at Corf Castle. And so that's why the castle was built there. But as I said, during the Civil War of the 1600s, um, when Cromwell came, this was a bit of a royalist area, and when Cromwell got on the throne, he had the castle blown up, which is why it's a ruin today. And we think most of Corf, the village itself, is built of the rubble that came out of the castle. Anyway, as I said, a bit of a lawless area. Swanage Bay, Old Harry, it's named after a pirate <laughs> in the 1800s. He used to sit round here, the other side of, of Ballard Cliff, this side in Swanage Bay, in his, his pirate ship. As the, the merchant ships came out of Pool Harbour, Okay, the wealthy part, the merchant ships came out, he'd pounce on them, take their goods and uh, sell them. So he's a pirate. So he's named after a pirate. The stack. It used to be his wife. It used to be his wife there. Yeah, we're going to talk about his wife as well. He used to be old Harry and his wife. It used to be the two stacks. But his, uh, his wife got a bit too decrepit and fell over into the sea one day. Oh, okay, so <laughs> that's she she recent rock times, about 30 years ago, 30, 40 years ago. So old, so old Harry's wife's had it. She's actually had it. But old Harry was actually a pirate and he did, uh, he did raid the merchant ships coming out of Port Harbour. But anyway, Swanage Bay, Swanage Harbour itself is quiet. 
it's calm, it's protected from the storms from the, uh, the southwest, so it's a good haven. Um, and now, in recent years, it's been in, turned into a tourist resort. Victorians came along, built the railway to Swanage, thought great place to, to uh, come to the seaside. They liked their seaside resorts as they did on the Isle of Wight, and they built up Swanage into quite a popular seaside resort. And then along came Dr. Beeching in the 1960s. British Railways at the time was in a huge mess. Very, very extensive throughout the country. A third more lines than there are today. 30% bigger than it is today. Okay, So it shows you how many lines were actually closed down. And Dr. Beeching was given the task of updating and modernising and making a report on what to do about British Railways because basically the infrastructure was so old it was falling apart and the government needed to pump money in to bring it back into a modern state and a modern uh, society. A lot of the wagons were about to fall apart, they were dangerous, didn't have brakes on them, that sort of thing was going on. So Dr Beeching undertook a review of British Railways and whether you like it or not, closed 30% of the railways in the UK. And one of them that was in Mark for Closure was this branch line from Wareham to Swanage. Um, too costly to keep open. You've got old wagons doing the, uh, the goods runs. Cheaper to say, drop the goods at Wareham. Lorries, local lorries will deliver it into Swanage. And that happened to a lot of these branch lines. Anyway, Swanage Railway completely taken up. All, by the 1970s, nothing left of the track bed. Okay, the station in the town had all been demolished and it was about to be made into a car park for a big supermarket. When, just at the last moment, a group of volunteers approached Swanage Town Council and said, can we buy the track bed and run it as a privatised railway? Today, it's now one of the biggest popular, most you know, heritage railways in the country. Very popular in the summer. Um, station you wouldn't even realise had been completely demolished. It's all been completely rebuilt as it was in its heyday. Uh, and, and it's a very popular, being now becoming a very popular tourist resort for a week or so in the summer or for a day trip or whatever. Okay, so a lot goes on. So tourism's picked it back up and because of that Swanage Town Council has ploughed a lot of money into Swanage itself. We'll see that this afternoon. Okay, what we're going to do this afternoon is we're going to where you've got that white van coming down off that road, coming down the slope, just there, if we can meet at the end of lunch. I'll give you a time to meet in a moment. Okay, so right at the other end of the promenade, promenade we'll just meet there. You can go onto the beach, it's fine. All right, so as the road, where the road bends and turns away to go uphill, you come off and we'll meet down there. We're going to walk along and look at the rocks that side of Swanage Bay this afternoon. We're not going to go all the way to the chalk. It's a long, long way to go to the chalk. Coming back from the chalk, well, if you went the other side, it gets younger. We've seen everything the other side, the Reading Beds, the London Clay, the sands of Bracklesham Beds and all those. That's what you get in Studland Bay. We've seen all that. We've seen what's older. So we're getting older. As you come from the chalk, you're getting older until you get to the Jurassic. Cretaceous, 60 to 80 million years old. Jurassic, 120 million years old. Okay, quick word about the chalk. The chalk is a big ridge. It runs all the way across to the Needles on the Isle of Wight. That chalk ridge snakes its way down the Isle of Wight and comes out of Whitecliff Bay, where you first started off your geology uh, last semester. Okay, some of you probably in the rain. All right, so Whitecliff Bay, all the way back across the island, to the needles and all the way. So this chalk crease runs a long, long way. You don't happen to know where it goes, do you? <coughs> no. <laughs> that way. Yeah, well, we don't. We'll have to find it out. We'll have to look on the map and find out where it goes. Ah, uh, maps. We have but this. But more importantly, 4,000 years ago, that chalk crease was intact across there. 4,000 years ago, it was breached by the sea. The sea got through a week apart and flooded the river system behind it, which was the Solent. So we're at the entrance to the Solent here and form the Solent as it is today. But before that, all the rivers were draining into this big estuarine river, which was known as the Solent, and it was a completely different system. So it's very, very recent times that that chalk ridge has been exposed. And, and some days you can see 
you can see bright waves breaking on the uh, chalk bridge just beneath the surface. It's quite shallow in places. Okay, it has to be dredged to allow um, some of the bigger ships out, the ferries and so out, so out, out of uh, Pool Harbour. If you went back and goes onto the seabed, you can find Roman quarries. So it's still going back. Okay, so it's very, it's like that in terms of time. Very, very quickly, that has just happened as far as geological times have occurred. While we're here, Steve, do you want to have a quick word about the cliff itself? Because you can see some things in the cliff, can't we? Um, yeah, I don't know if you, if you have a look at the beginning of a chalk there. So this is probably the lower chalk. Just before that, um, it's a series of these kind of more clay soil beds, yeah? So you've got a sequence, as uh, Dr. Watson said, going up through the Cretaceous. Uh, you've got the Wilden beds to begin with, then the Afterfield clay. But just as you get to the chalk itself, there's the Gault. I don't know if everyone remembers the blue slipper maybe mentioned on the Isle of Wight. A very slip slidey clay clay. All the wrong terms there, but a clay clay, which sits just underneath the chalk there. And what happened back in around 2000, I think it was, about 19 years ago, is that the Gault itself actually had a rotational slip. And what happened was that when people came out onto the shore, they actually saw the Gault protruding up from the seabed, very close to the Connor shore, the gulf was protruding, and what happened there was a rotational slip that brought down the chalk on top. So you had a fairly competent rock, okay, competent rock, fairly soft, but fairly competent, that had failed through the loss of support from the clay underneath. And you can still see the, the actual slip there. Everyone's seen kind of an upside down W. Um, the thing with chalk is that the whiter, or the brighter it is, okay, the more white it is, the more recent a fall's taken place. It's when it goes mossy and green that it's fairly stable. But you can still see an upside down kind of W there, which is an indication that's been a fairly recent, say nine, ten years ago, fall. So the clay slip, rotational failure underneath, bringing down the chalk on top. Um, somebody mentioned Paul's Grove earlier, didn't they? Everyone remember we looked at the, back in the first year, Paul's Grove yeah, yeah. chalk there? That's of a different... Uh, this has all been folded, yeah? Everyone know about folds and all that? Yeah. So we're not actually on the same ridge as such as Paul's Grove. What's happened is that the chalk's been folded, it goes back down and then comes back up again in the, the, the fold uh, that you see at Paul's Grove there. So you've got a series of what they call um, on echelon folds going across the south in this region, yeah? And this is all to do with plate tectonics of, uh, is it the African plate came up, <laughs> hit the European plate, the alpine orogeny, okay, and the ripples were sent out through the soil and the rock from the Alps, and that's folded all the deposits in this area. And that's why the beds are all at different angles, due to plate tectonics. And it's all linked into the earthquake. I don't know if anyone knows, there was an earthquake in Japan this morning. Yeah, yeah. This whole idea of plates around the earth all moving about, folding and reshaping the, the soil and the rock was deposited. Thanks Steve. One last thing before we go for a lunch break. If you get lost, if you miss, if you don't know where we are this afternoon, you see the stone pier going out from the beach, the stone pier, there's a road that goes up from the stone pier. If you go up that road, you will find the coach on the left hand side. Go up there about half a mile. There's a coach park, it's on the, on the uh, left hand side. The coach will leave probably about half past three to go back today, okay? So if you get lost, get back there before half past three. If you can't, if you miss the coach completely, it's a bus. It's one of two places. You take a bus from Swanage to Wareham, or you take a bus over to Bournemouth. Both places you can get the railway and then get back to Portsmouth that way. Don't hope, to, don't want to leave anyone behind, but just in case it does happen, we'll meet you at the end of the promenade where the road disappears up the hill. It's quarter past one to half past two. What about the Waybridge? Sure. Oh yeah, as you walk into town, try and see that you'll go down into town this way. See the what the Swanage Angling Centre. Have a look at the uh, what's written in the stone. The Swanage Angling Centre. It's a Waybridge. When well, they dug out the big blocks of limestone, took them into the town, they would have been weighed, and that's where they would have been classed for how much they were worth. Okay, so it's all been picked out and renovated recently. <coughs> have a look. So how past two? Sound good? Yeah.